Okay, well this is our second video here on section 1.1 and we're ready to do some problems and you know this is kind of nervous time because this is when we first start to do some algebra. So if you're if you have your algebra journal this is on page six there's really a whole not a whole lot of questions here we've got 11 questions and let's start with number one that's a really good place to start we've got w plus four equals 16. Well, if I take a look at what I have here, I've got a variable. And we might as well highlight all the variables here. And it says to that variable, I'm going to add 4. And when I add 4 to that variable, I'm going to get 16. So I need to think about what is the inverse operation to adding 4. This is the piece right here that's important to me. I'm adding 4 to my variable. And what is the inverse operation to adding 4? Well, it's subtracting 4. So I'm going to take that w plus 4 equation that I started with, and it's still going to equal 16, but now I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And what that does is creates what we call a zero pair right there. w plus 4 minus 4. Plus 4 and minus 4 is a zero pair. Pair. It means when I add them together, I get zero. So what I'm left with is just a w on that left side. Now on the right side, this is just arithmetic. 16 minus 4 is 12. Again, use your calculator if you're not confident about that 16 minus 4 equaling 12 and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge you on that 16 minus 4 I couldn't do that very reliably when I was in ninth grade either so no judgment just use a calculator let's take a look at number two now we've got x plus 7 equals negative 12 so to my variable I'm adding 7 what's the inverse operation of adding 7 and that is subtracting 7. So I'm going to write x plus 7 is still equal to negative 12. But now I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Here's that 0 pair again. Since that is a 0 pair highlighted in blue, that means that I don't have to write it anymore. Plus 7 minus 7 is 0. x plus 0 is just x. So that tells me that x equals negative 19. Minus 12, minus 7, that's negative 19. Not a big deal. Grab a calculator, grab a good calculator, and just add those two things together, or subtract them. Now number 3 is a little different, because instead of having the minus 15 in behind the, the variable, I have it in front of the variable. Well, it's still minus 15, so what is the inverse of subtracting 15? Well, that inverse of subtracting 15 is adding 15. I'm going to add 15 to both sides. And notice how neatly this makes 0. And that's kind of important for you to see. You want to make sure that what you're doing here creates a 0. So minus, plus 15, minus 15, that makes a 0, plus w. So the only thing left here is a plus w. And really, you don't even have to write the plus sign. You just have to write w. Uh, 16 plus 5, that's 21. I'm not going to pretend I, had, I didn't have to think about that. Of course I had to think about that. Um, I'm not that great of a calculator. Uh, so here, there we go. Uh, w equals 21. You could check this if you want. Here, I'll check this. It's not a big deal. If I did minus 15, minus 15, and I add to that 21, I should get 6, and I do. So look, it worked out just fine. Okay, here's another one. This one's a more of this easier variety. I've got z minus 5 equals 8. Okay, so I'm taking my variable z and I'm subtracting 5. So what is the inverse of subtracting 
5, well, the inverse of subtracting is the adding. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. There we go again. We're creating the zero pair. So important that you're making those zeros. So that means that z is equal to whatever 8 plus 5 is. How much is 8 plus 5? I think it's 13. Okay. Number 5 is pretty much the same thing, only we have the y minus 9 on the right side of the equal sign. Um, now is a good time as any to remember that you want to think of that equal sign kind of like a wall. We're passing, we're not really, you know, um, well, if we do something on the, if we add or something on the right side of the wall, you have to, have to add the same thing on the left side of the wall. So what is the inverse operation of minus 9? Okay, the inverse operation of minus 9 is plus 9. So we're going to plus 9 to both sides. And what does that get us? Well, uh, here is a zero pair again, minus 9 plus 9. That makes a zero, so that gives me a y on the right side, minus, uh, minus 2 plus 9, that is 7. Okay. Grab a calculator if you're not sure. I wasn't sure, uh, but yeah, it is, it is 7. All right, so y is 7. Again, if you wanted to uh, use a... Um, you wanted to check that you could just start off again with uh, what we have uh, it says y minus 9 if I'm saying y is 7 then if I did 7 minus 9 I should get a negative 2 and oh look I did take a look at number 6 we've got 7 times q equals 35 now this is where you know I don't want to penalize you if you memorize your times tables because if you memorize your times tables, you know that 7 times 5 is 35, and you could just write q equals 35. There's no reason for me not to accept that as an answer. No, I'm sorry, q isn't equal to 35, q is equal to 5. Um, but I want to show you how this is going to get done with algebra. We know q is 5. That's not the problem. That's not the issue. We want to use our inverse operations. That is the point. Use the inverse operation. So what's the inverse of 7, or what's the inverse for 7 multiplying something? Well, that's dividing by 7. So I'm going to put divided by 7 on both sides. Okay, remember, the fraction is dividing. Okay, I've divided both sides by 7. How much is 35 divided by 7? Well, that's 5, obviously. Nice thing about having the fraction instead of using the division sign is with the division sign, the order is important, you know. 35 divided by 7, that's not the same thing. I'm going to move this over here. If I did 35 divided by 7, that's not the same thing as 7 divided by 35. Okay, That doesn't work. But it does work if you do 1 7th multiplied by 35. That's the same thing as 35 multiplied by 1 7th. This does work. So that's one reason why we want to use the division sign instead, or I'm sorry, we want to use the fraction, the reciprocal, instead of the division sign. It just um, allows us to divide without worrying about the order of things. Let's take a look at this next one. We have 4 times b equals negative 52. Okay, I just said 4 times b. So what is the inverse operation of times? Okay, so it's, it's going to be divide. I know that. Um, so we're going to divide by 4. But I want you to take a look at what I did. I rewrote the equation. I put parentheses around the entire left side. I put parentheses in, outside the entire right side. And then now I'm going to write the 1 fourth for divide by 4 in a different color outside of that parentheses. 
So that's good form. That's how we want things to be done. Okay. Now, in this case, the vocabulary that we're going to use, we should have used it over here, is these are multiplicative inverses. Multiplicative inverse refers to the division and multiplication interplay. So when you divide, when you multiply by multiplicative inverse, in essence what you get is 1. And when you multiply 1 by q, like we do over here, 1 times q is just q. And that's different than what we did with addition and subtraction. In addition and subtraction we use the additive inverse because when you add 0 to something, you get the exact same thing back to it. So, um, multiplicative inverse versus additive inverse. Here's another multiplicative inverse that we did with number 7. 1 fourth multiplied by 4. That's a multiplicative inverse, so that gives us 1. 1 times b is just b. All right, so how much is... I feel like we started this problem a while ago, so we should finish it. How much is 52 divided by 4? I think that's 13. I think I've played enough cards to know that one. Okay, number 8 is a weird looking one. We've got 3 equals q over 11. And remember what that means? That means q divided by 11. So what is the inverse of dividing by 11? Well, it's multiplying by 11. So we're going to do exactly the same thing we did with the multiplicative inverses. This time the inverse is going to be to multiply by 11. So we're just going to put 11 on the outside. Notice how the form is exactly the same way. Here's our multiplicative inverse. 1 11th multiplied by 11. And that gives me, let's see, 11 times 3 is 33. So 33 equals q. I'm going to say it again. Make sure you're paying attention to the form, how these things look as you write them down on paper. It's almost as important as getting to the correct answer. In fact, most algebra teachers will say it's more important that you do the form correctly than you get the right number at the end. I kind of agree with those people, actually. Okay, n over negative 2. That's n divided by negative 2. All right, so we're dividing by negative 2. The multiplicative inverse here of multiply, dividing by negative 2, that's the same, the um, inverse is to multiply by negative 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative 2. Okay. Just like we did before, multiply by negative 2. And here is our multiplicative inverse negative 2 and negative 2. So that gives me an n over here. Negative 2 times negative 15, that is positive 30. So look at that. We did nine problems just now. And now there are a few more here. Uh, we should take a look at uh, number 10. A coupon subtracts 1795 from the price of p. From p. Okay, so we take p and we subtract from that 1795. And then you end up paying 7190 for the headphones. Okay, set the, actually it's $71.80. Okay, so this is going to force us to use our calculator here. You now uh, read the read the, the problem. It says write and solve an equation. So if you're doing this on a test, that means you're going to get points for simply writing the equation. Not just solving the equation, but also writing the equation. That's an important part of this. And i got to tell you, once you move to your um, high school exit exam or whichever it is when you're watching this, uh, just writing the equation is uh, as many points as getting the correct answer at the end. Okay, so now that we've written an equation, this is kind of the power of math. It doesn't matter what the context is anymore. We just solve it the same way that we solve any other equation. So this says P minus 1795. What's the inverse operation for subtracting 1795? 
Well, it's um, adding seven, seven, 1795. So we're going to add 1795 to both sides here. Hopefully I have enough room. So let's add 1795. Okay, that's going to give me P is equal to, now I got to tell you, I don't know how to add this together. I mean, I, I do know, how, I mean, I do know how to add it together, obviously, but I'm going to use a calculator just like you would. 7180 plus 1795. How much is that? Oh, that's 8975. So P is equal to 8975. Now, there's a big push here for you to write down exactly what you're answering here. So the original price is $89.75. Okay, we want you to know, or we want to know if you know exactly what you're saying when you write that P equals $89.75. Not just abstractly, but what is this in context? So the original price is $89.75. And this last problem here, we've got two-fifths of the brownies you made have are left over. There are 16 brownies left. Now, of, that is shorthand in mathematics for multiply. Multiply. Okay. So two-fifths of however many brownies we made is left over. And there are 16 leftovers. So two-fifths of the brownies that we made is 16. Now you could have used any variable. It didn't have to be B. It just happened I chose B for brownies. And this is a problem that we actually haven't solved that much yet. Uh, and this is the power of the multiplicative inverse. Because, as you see, I'm going to do this two-fifths B. And that's equal to 16 still putting them in parentheses like I always do. And I just got to think, what is the reciprocal of two-fifths? Okay, it's, it's five halves. So we'll just write down a five halves in front of this. And I don't know what five halves times 16 is. I definitely have to do a little thinking about that. But I do know that this here is a multiplicative inverse. So that gives me 1. So let's see if I can do this in my head. Uh, 16 divided by 2, that is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. So it looks like B is 40. So we made 40 brownies. And that's it, everyone. Uh, hopefully, with all of these example problems, you're going to succeed in whatever assignment that you're going to be doing here on simple equations. And we'll see you next time. Have a good day.